Yeah, it feels um, like my uh, lesson plan for the last few weeks has been about understanding the difference between true and false empathy. And, but I think even just even beyond the last couple of weeks, it's just been a lifelong pattern of false empathy. And then seeing how that it really is a defense against the truth and really being shown how it's an attack, actually, and but in a very, seems like it's wrapped in a very nice, neat package. So, yeah, it's very, um, it, it's really hard to see it sometimes. So I've just been um, watching my mind around that and just really, when I'm noticing that I'm falling into false empathy, sort of maybe going way on the other end <laughs> into, you know, not wanting to um, do something out of feeling sorry for somebody. And, but yeah, it's just been a, a, n a number of lessons that have come up for me around that. And, and just like, you know, you helping Radiance up the stairs sometimes, you know, I'm to the point like, I don't know if I should help that person or because I, you know, there's the, all the, all the old patterns start coming in and where I, you know, I have been really listening to the spirit and the, the, the messages that I'm giving when it seems like, you know, somebody is in pain or something is going on. I have been, you know, communicating that and and um, sharing that and then the reflection I get back is just this chaotic you know anger and you know and it's just like wow <laughs> I it wasn't I don't know what I was expecting but obviously you know this reflection of um, upset is seemingly coming back at me and, and I think Maybe I'm wondering too if, if I've used false empathy as a way of keeping the rage and anger away from my awareness, you know, by using it in some, like in a magical way, like arranging the deck, deck chairs, I've used empathy in that way so that I didn't have to really look at the deeper rage and anger that I might have. So it's just, it's just like I'm getting glimpses of that, but I'm just wanting you know, your thoughts around true versus false empathy? Um, well, again, the world was set up to seek and not find. The world was set up to give care and attention to that which was made as a distracted device away from putting true care and attention on the spirit. So, most people reflect this sense of, um, of caretaking. Uh, in 12 steps they call them caretakers, you know, and, and Alcoholics Anonymous and codependency and so on and so forth. The codependency is set up in such a massive scale that uh, a lot of what is false empathy goes as being good and caring and nice. And that's how sneaky it is. It's actually death. It's part of a death wish, but it's been sugar-coated so much that it seems to be good and well and nice. So, some of you are aware of the, the first edition of the course. It's on page 24, the second editions and beyond. It's on page 28. I think it's the prayer, I'm here to be truly helpful. When Jesus puts the word truly in front of helpful, you know there's something underneath that. It, it's a prayer that you're supposed to pray over and over. I am here to be truly helpful. He doesn't say, I'm here to be helpful. He says, I'm here to be truly helpful. Because as you go through this awakening process, that perception of helpfulness is going to change dramatically. 
that's what it means to give yourself over to the Holy Spirit for guidance because a lot of what the Holy Spirit will use in the transformation of consciousness is he will use the body, he will use the words, he will use the behaviors and the ego also wants to use the body and the words, the behaviors for its purpose as a death wish. So as you go deeper and deeper with a discernment um, you move more and more towards this deep state of stillness which you're getting higher and higher up that truly helpful ladder, so to speak, coming to a teacher of God could heal the world without a sound. Wow! That could heal the world without a sound. Silence could heal the world. That's where this is heading. And yet, as you go through it, practically speaking, there will be behaviors being done through, being spoken through, and for just helping it get up and out, what needs to be cleared as well. And it's very, very subtle as you go through this practice. So, you start to pay more and more attention to your feelings. Jesus says that's the one right use of judgment, how do you feel? And then that becomes your like barometer for your mind training. And that's very important because a lot of suppression and repression has been part of that pattern. And then taking on roles, helping profession roles, advocate roles, advocacy roles. The whole identity, the whole false identity can be teetered and built up on this false empathy uh, belief that there's a world out there, that there's people that are disadvantaged, that there's people that need to be saved, and the whole identity, egoic identity, can be hugely invested in saving the world, in saving people, saving children, it, you know, looking for cures for diseases, you know, it could be huge branches of science and medicine that go on involving tens of thousands of people that are part of those and that's all part of an intricate deception of what we could call false empathy. Where true empathy is simply aligning with what is real and true, like Jesus or like Mary Baker Eddy for an example, you know, and starting to bring everything back to mind. So with helping people there's all these things you can do to be helpful and when you start to understand these divine metaphysics, you see, my mind is so worthy of attention. My mind, watching my feelings, watching my emotions, is my full-time job, so to speak. And there's, there will be mistakes that will come. We're not trying to keep score, the Holy Spirit's not <laughs> keeping score. But it's not so much what how people react to you, but just paying close attention to your emotions. Um, you know, there are, people have watched me in situations where people were raging or pounding tables and when I was in uh, China there was a whole mob of, of angry people one time at the airport but I was like a foot taller than them so just for the fun of it I went and decided to stand in the middle of an angry mob. I had that be kind of a fun experience and, and they were all just screaming. It was so Mandarin I couldn't understand but they were screaming and shouting and red faces and fists. But, but, you know, it just shows, again, it's not, it's not what seems to be happening, you know, it's not that there won't seem to be angry, screaming, shouting people, but when you're above it, you're just above it. Literally, I was above it in a couple different ways. But, but it was, it was just a joyful experience. I was just kind of peering down and watching. And that's the kind of things the Holy Spirit does with you when, when you're in your right mind, you know, just for the fun of it. Go stand in the middle of an angry mob and enjoy it. Enjoy the experience, you know, because you're not interpreting anything, you know, you're not taking anything on, you're not doing that. And that's what true empathy really is. And that's, that's also, I mean, that's what I, I really enjoy about RML. She's so much true empathy that, you know, if I say, how's the festival going for you? She said, not interested. <laughs> 
And I'd love that, you know. I just, I like, I like everyone to just tell it like it is. Uh, you know, that's to me that's adorable. Uh, I, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of true empathy. Uh, but that's the beauty of it. See, it she can have a good laugh at it too. She's not. <laughs> And the more you get into it, the more you see the value of true empathy, because, you know, you're just dealing with the truth when you get into your mind, mm -hmm. and you start to feel the joy and the happiness of being happy for no earthly reason. Isn't that wonderful, when you're happy for no earthly reason? We, you, know, you know the feeling I'm talking about, mm -hmm. where you just don't even know why, but you're indescribably happy, and you can't even think of a damn thing. <laughs> To be happy about you, it doesn't have a it doesn't have a cause in the world. It doesn't have a tether. It doesn't have a, a reason. It's just indescribably happy. And to me, that is a movement towards this true empathy. And I I encourage that. I appreciate that. Uh, I remember that movie uh, Meg Ryan did with uh, with. Um, Tom Hanks called Joe versus the volcano, and I remember there's one point where Joe's talking to her, and it's one of Meg Ryan's characters in that movie. But he says something to her, and she says, "I have absolutely no response to that." And I thought, "That's cool." But in that moment, she had absolutely no response, and uh, and if you have to be free in your mind and connected in your mind so that anything can come, including I have no response to that, or just including feeling that joy and happiness that's within you and, and not trying to think that you have to do something or fix something or maintain something to keep it even. That it's just the most natural bubbling experience, exploding. Sometimes I know it feels like exploding joy. And, and it doesn't really matter what the world is doing or how the world seems to react. I, I noticed that a lot with Armel. She's, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And it doesn't matter what, what the form or the reaction is. She's not, she's not really interested in that. <laughs> and that's good. It's a good thing. You know, it's the end of codependency when you can feel that. <laughs> We're, we're undoing codependence relationships. So. so I just want to support you in that. And, and I want to support you in being free to share what's on your mind. Because that's where we expose the, whatever the private thoughts are. And that's how these false sense of empathy, you know, this false empathy is undone by doing that. And you will grow much more confident in the truth as you go along.